This is Twit. Well, an Indian startup called Inada Systems has developed a chip for wearable computers that can run for 30 days in full uh, on mode without recharging. The company emerged from stealth mode today, and they've got some big backers, including Samsung and Qualcomm. With us to explain this story is Don Clark, technology writer for The Wall Street Journal. Welcome, Don. Hello. I've been reading you, Don, by the way, for so long, for many, many years, and I really appreciate you coming on at last on Tech News Today. So I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing your, uh, your information on this. So now, can you tell us about Inada Systems? Where did this company come from? It's been operating in stealth mode for a couple of years in India. <clears throat> the people who are there are people who had built operations largely for AMD in India, some of which are now part of Qualcomm. And uh, these guys are real veteran uh, tech semi guys, and they decided that uh, basically every new wave of technology has kind of had its own chip, kind of chip architecture. PCs had their own chips, mobile devices have had their own chips. They decided that wearables just had their own attributes, largely related to power consumption, that meant that they really need to start from scratch almost in designing them. Now, one of the things that's uh, of note when you talk about wearables is people mean different things when they say wearables. Sometimes it's a Google Glass type device, even within the Google Glass or even within the smart glass world, there are super high power and super low power devices. People think of wristwatches. Uh, Google mentioned a smart jacket. You know, they, it could be anything. And what's interesting about this news uh, is that this chipset uh, or chip uh, line, I guess you would call it, called the Danush, uh, will come in four tiers. So it'll they, they actually have four tiers to run the gamut of the wearable, uh, potential wearable devices. Is that correct? That's right. And and within the, the, the chip architecture, it also has different levels in each uh, kind of chip. So so we're, uh, we're used to these big processors that have a, a major CPU or a major graphics chip. This has, is basically the key to its operation is a very small, very quiet chip that is essentially the always on part of the, the chip. And it basically listens to sensors and just basically listens to see if it should wake up and wake up the rest of the circuitry. So when it's in that mode, it draws very, very little power. So that's a key thing with, with say, a smartwatch or something in your on your clothing or something. You don't want to be plugging it in all the time. And um, so they've bas basically started with it with a pretty much a clean sheet of paper. Um, and uh, then they, within their product family, they go everywhere from a kind of a full, you know, kind of Android style, uh, computing processor to a much, much simpler kind of product for, for a simpler kind of wearable device. And don't you wonder how long then it will take to charge something like this if it's going to last for 30 days? It won't take 30 days to then charge back up, right? <laughs> That'd be stupid. That's right. One of the things that you forget about is that is that the physical size of the batteries just keep getting smaller and along with the physical size of the devices. So, so uh, you know, a... Uh, the actual amount of space you have for the battery is also gone way down. That's the other issue with when you have something the size of a wristwatch or something smaller. Um, so it, it won't take a super long time to charge because it can't store very much. Uh, so that's not mm. really the problem. The problem is, is uh, you know, draining it as slowly as possible. Now, Don, do you think the story and the emergence of this company and the nature of their technology indicates a new era for Indian technology. I mean, people in the United States sometimes think of India as uh, is uh, specializing in call centers and things like that. Think about China as specializing in manufacturing, but here they're kind of positioning themselves as the intel for the wearable era. Is this uh, is this part of a larger uh, uh, evolution of the technology scene in India? Do you think? Well, I, I'm not an expert on the technology scene there, but my understanding is they've always had a very hard, big uh, force of programmers, so they do a lot of software work. And but they have also churned out a lot of electrical engineers that have gone on to the uh, the, the semiconductor industry, mostly outside of India. There has been some work inside of India that has been, uh, you know, operations of Intel, of Qualcomm, of AMD, uh, based there and they do projects kind of ordered up by the home office. I think what's exciting about this is a more entrepreneurial streak of products actually conceived and designed within the country. So um, admittedly, there aren't many companies of that ilk in India. So, so it's hard to say that this will be the one that redefines 
the landscape, but it is certainly a different kind of attempt than uh, the usual Indian startup. Well, companies like this tend to breed other companies. If you look at the history of Silicon Valley, it's, you know, Fairchild Semiconductor engineers leave to form Intel and then engineers from them there leave to form other companies and eventually you get Silicon Valley. And, uh, and of course, these, these engineers left from Western and U.S. companies for the most part. And so, yeah, so this could be actually kind of a seed for a, a new sort of chip uh, design, uh, conceptualization, and fabrication industry within India, which would be a really interesting turn of events. They certainly got uh, the engineers and, and the will to do it. So it's, it's pretty exciting uh, news for people who are rooting for India to continue to emerge as a uh, closer to a first world uh, economy. Don, I want to Or even anyone who wants to then argue for immigration reform, because, you know, the argument there is that we train a lot of engineers over here and then send them right back because our immigration policy is so wonky. If you want to get all political about it, uh, agreed. And of, and of course, I always do. Uh, so, Don, do you think that? So, um, do you have? Did you have a comment about? Uh, oh, about I just wanted to say one thing is one of the things that's interesting is any kind of chip startup has had trouble getting funding uh, mm. these days for the past uh, you know seven or eight years. Venture capitalists in Silicon Valley they want to put money into something that they can get a profit return on after they put in five or ten million dollars. Chip startups take usually. 60 or 70 million before you get anything out of them. So it's, it's been strange to fund any chip startup. So this company managed to get 17 million. Qualcomm and Samsung are involved. Imagination Technologies, the British graphics chip maker, is also one of the first investors. And they really got some great board members. Uh, the chairman is Sanjay Ya, who was at, um, who was, uh, ran Motorola Mobility, was a long time at Qualcomm, and is now the CEO Hello. of Global Hello. Foundries. So he is, uh, you know, they've got some heavyweight people on their board. Right. So funny about this is that this market is so bullish when there are still reports saying that the majority, well, I don't know, a large percentage of people get these wearables and then abandon them within six weeks, six months. Um, but, you know, the industry is saying, no, you want this. Believe me. Exactly. And it's part of the whole Internet of Things concept, was, which is really, um, you know, if you make a watch, if you don't make it a smart watch, pretty soon you won't be in the watch business. If you make a lighting fixture, and if it's not a smart lighting fixture, pretty soon you won't be able to sell a lighting fixture or a doorknob if it's not smart. So I really think people are betting that just intelligence is going to become just the price of entry for a lot of conventional businesses. Yeah, which is going to make dumb watches uh, a, uh, a luxury item for the wealthy, I uh, guarantee it. Well, Don, I want to thank you for coming on Tech News today. Again, I'm a big fan and uh, hope to have you on again soon. Cheers. Thank you. All right. You can find Don at WSJ.com, of course, and also on Twitter at DonAL888.